Next, in the workshop, Monsters That Mimic. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. We are going to continue working on the Dice Mimics from the Geeks Collaborative Gaming. There he is right there. Look at that monster. Isn't he awesome as all heck? I am a D12 that will eat yours whole. I don't know. I don't know what he does. But you got flames. So that's kind of where we're going to start today, I think. Now, I haven't decided if I want to do green flames, or if I want to do standard flames, or if I want to do a combination of green and standard flames, you know. I don't know yet. So while we're, you know, figuring that out, we're going to add some highlights and stuff to the actual die itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to put, we're going to use Xerxes. And my camera doesn't want to focus for me. Xerxes purple. Zer Xerxes purple. That's going to be our next step in the purples. Well, I hope everybody's still staying safe out there, doing what they have to do. Staying home if you have to stay home, or at least being careful when you go out. I know I probably probably should be home in the studio far more than I actually am. But hey, everybody goes a little stir crazy after a while. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the edges of the dice in a nice thick kind of highlight of this purple And it's fairly simple, you just kind of stay straight on it. go now that one that highlights gonna be really hard to see on camera but that's okay well, basically we're done with that one boom you can go to the next level which is gene stealer purple What 
we're gonna do. Shake that bottle up a little bit more. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Take it off the lid. Put it on the pallet. Wash off the brush. Switch it out for the small layer brush. Get some water in that purple. I'm going to go with a far thinner edging highlight. Along it. To really start pulling those dice faces out. And you want these lines to try you you try and want these lines to be thin to show that there's kind of a sharp edge Sometimes it's real easy because there is actually a sharp edge, so you're just using the flat of your brush to give to run the paint along that high line. Sometimes uh, highlight. Sometimes you gotta kind of fudge the details and make that thin line, you know, to make it look. But there's a fine, fine sharp edge. There we go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go along. We're going to pick out some of the some of the edges on the numbers too in this Gene Steeler purple.
you know, just to help the numbers. I mean, they're gold. Or you're you're gonna see them easily no matter what you do. You know, it'll just help kind of. Oh, to me, it just kind of helps drive home the the three D ness, the the, you know, the the fact that the numbers are actually carved carved in. But that's me. What do I know? I'm just a person who paints. You know, and then hopefully what we come up with is something that looks pretty, pretty cool. Something that you'll be, uh, you know, happy to terrorize your gaming groups with. Okay. So, I'm trying to give you an idea of uh, what we've done. Or what I've done. You can kind of see the. Hopefully, it'll snap into focus. Hopefully. There we go. You can kind of see how I've, you know, ringed it. Uh, here we go. Oh, focus again. Anyway, you guys get the idea. It's on the edges, so now the dice, no, the die. Huh, it's, the die has, uh, you know. Had its nice edging put together. It looks good. Okay. Now it looks to me like it has something in its mouth and not like a fireball or something. I mean, it could. I think in a reverse, almost a reverse green flame would look pretty cool. So flames are usually hotter towards the base and darker as you go out. So it'll be bright orange, white, out to a darker orange, red to the smoke. That's how a real flame works. Um, but I'm thinking that, you know, since he's a mimic and magical and stuff like that, we might actually do it in reverse. So the outer layers will be brighter and the inner areas will be darker and I'm thinking about making it green I think that would be kind of cool I don't know 
we'll keep thinking on that a little bit. We're going to go back to the skull. We're going to start working, working that up a little bit. You know, I take those little things off, I put them down, and I don't watch where I put them down. And now I... Oh, there it is. It's behind the dome. It's behind the creature. We're going to go back to our small layer brush. I'm just going to start working the skull. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to really quite thin down the Zandri dust which is the color that we made it before we give before we gave it a purple wash and the reason why we gave it a purple wash is because we wanted to try and help blend it coming out of the out of the dice the dye that it originally was so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put some edge highlights in there at the moment well not really edge highlights but we'll work the edges and we're going to work out a little bit and I want to make this really watery So that you can actually, you know, see where the purple and the bone co-mingle, coexist. And where the bone color is starting to come out of the purple. Hopefully it'll actually look pretty cool. I'm hoping it's... I already think it's looking pretty cool, but... That's just one humble paint slinger's opinion. You might look at it and go... Psh. I could do that kind of painting in my sleep and I could make it look a million times better. And that's cool. In a competition, Hoss. If it was, uh, if I thought it was decent enough, I might enter. My piece, not the contest. I think it's coming along pretty decent. Actually.
you know, of course, right out at the, at the farthest part of the jaw. I wanted to make it as bone colored as possible. I think he's looking pretty badass. going to take Ushabdi Bone There you go, Ushabdi Bone It's part of the highlight For the bone now this one here, we are literally just going to hit some of the highlights on the bone. Again, this is mostly in here, the noses, and maybe the, the teeth, but... I don't want much. Again, it's another color that I want fairly watered down. Bang, um, we're gonna give it a slight wash with Egrex Earthshade to dull the bone part back down. to the 
medium layer brush, giving it a shake. And just where the bone is. Now we haven't picked out the teeth yet. That's okay. Because we're not ready for that. Heck, we weren't even ready for the fire today. Still thinking, or at least I am. Still thinking on the colors that I want. Okay. The base, on the other hand, that's going to be pretty easy. It's just going to be a basic brown base with uh, the rocks done in gray. Yeah, but it's that fire that's perplexing me today. I don't know. I don't know what to do with the fire. I mean, if I go traditional fire, which would look really cool, um, it'd be easy for me to work in both directions on a standard style of fire. Green. Green's easy. I think I, I think I know what I've decided to do. I'm going to mix the two. And we're going to start with the fire on the top here, and that's going to be stand, your standard fire. So what I'm doing is I'm taking Averland Sunset and I'm giving it just an over base coat and then we're going to work the colors the brighter yellows and then the darker oranges and reds from here and then he's got some kind of he's got you know this thing's got something in its mouth and then in the mouth and coming out from underneath that's where the green flame is going to be, and it's still going to be an inverted green flame. So it's going to be dark and then coming out to, to light, I think. If not, it'll be just regular, except it'll be green. But I think that's what I've decided. I think this big old crown up here. Gonna be your standard, your standard fire. Ah, oh, burn things, burn the And then coming out of his mouth and the lower jaw is green flame thing. I don't know what it is. It's mystical. It's magical. going to be fire. That's all the person needs to know. I 
right guys well I'm a little over my time when we come back we'll have this base coated and we'll probably have the green base coated as well and we'll be ready to go on the fire so until next time stay safe and paint safe see you next time in the workshop